Hey guys. <laughs> um, so, uh, tonight we're going to be playing, let me go back. I love you Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator because I thought it looked funny. So <laughs> we're going to be romancing the Colonel. Maybe it'll be interesting. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It could be really bad. It could be really funny. Who knows? We're going to go ahead and start a new game. Um, Tell us your name. I'm just gonna go with Baker Bell. Whoa, that is a lot. Um, that is all caps. I'm not sure I like that, but sure. All right. So uh, a lot of people have um, have uh, panned this game because it's basically an advertisement for KFC uh, because KFC made it. But um, I don't know. I just thought it would be kind of funny because it's like a parody of these kinds of <laughs> These kinds of things. Is that supposed to be like BTS back there? That's funny. Okay. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. Okay, so we're a student. Cool. Good to know. All right. So, um, all right. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. That's really annoying. Smack that clock up and at him, or throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever. We're going to go ahead and smack the clock and get up. Because, yeah. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Can they put any more versions of, like, I don't know, university in there? <laughs> Academy? Okay, cool. What is this? Is this the exit? Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Just want to make sure. If I need to change any settings, we're good. Okay. And that's just a fast forward. All right. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You'll need to take this seriously or you allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. Hmm. Well, if this were really me, I would probably sit there and daydream a bit because that's just how I am. And I usually wake up in the morning and then I lay in bed for about 20 minutes and then I finally get up. So we're going to daydream a little bit. It's here. Finally, your face, <laughs> your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare. So many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit. Of course you grab a biscuit. <laughs> course you do it's is it from kfc i mean because probably you grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry mmm delicious just what you needed to wake up those taste buds <laughs> wow <laughs> wow kfc really okay okay cool hold on one second well while, while we're looking at this biscuit here just hold on a second there we go that's better there we go yay we have a biscuit Yikes, you're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant. Oh, God, that's the worst. Before running out the door, you're sweating buckets as you... KFC buckets? <laughs> as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. All right, we gotta have a voice for Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Baker Bell. Are you excited for the fair? <laughs> Sorry, I've I've been drinking a margarita. I've only had like half of it. Okay. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What's the? No, that was me. What's the? <laughs> it's just that. This morning, I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? <gasps> Classic Miriam. Raised by master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quick, quick sandbox? A quick sandbox? Really? Who's got a box of quicksand that children are playing in? Wouldn't that just be a sandbox? Pretty sure that would just be a sandbox. Okay, whatever. It's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person person I know. You're going to do great. I probably shouldn't drink any more of this, but... 
we're romancing people. We need some, uh, we need some liquid courage and we need some chapstick. Gotta look good for when the colonel arrives. All right. It's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> but with University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters, three-day only, okay. <laughs> I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. This sweet girl, Miriam, has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Pep talk your best friend or change the subject to school gossip. Ooh. School gossip. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Hmm? Sure, why not? We'll go with school gossip. It's hard to see Miriam like this, and frankly, quite exhausting. Rather than dwell on heart anxiety, you try to change the subject to something more interesting. All summer, you've been hearing rumors about a dreamy, enigmatic... <laughs> enigmatic mystery student who's enrolled at this school what is with of what is with me today i can't talk yeah that's a little worrisome but you'll be fine now what about this mystery student we read about on the school message board any new dudes uh -huh. oh get this i heard his name is harland and he's no ordinary student they say he has powers he's had them ever since he was born from an egg an what? <laughs> okay. An egg? Like a chicken? Don't be ridiculous. But that thing about having powers, it would line up with some of the other rumors I've heard. Like, I heard he once fought a bear with just his smile. This is so weird. <laughs> you both sigh, thinking about a student so handsome that the laws of physics don't dare apply to him. Dreamy. <sighs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Oh no. Hey! It's Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Kind of like Ashley already. <laughs> Hello. Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. <laughs> you leave Bigger Bell's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man. <laughs> what? Van Van the Man Man has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. <clears throat> Van Van. You rang rang. What is this? Okay, you've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. Our diplomas now, whatever. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. Oh. Psh, see you later, losers. <laughs> As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. <laughs> what? Uh. Oopsie. I think it's broken. What is this? You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. 
Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Baker Bell. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Why is there a ghost? What is this? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? It's just you. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's just you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. Okay. <laughs> you both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy, busy chit-chatting. A scrubby-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of class. Adorable. Oh no, I'm gonna have to find a- figure out a voice for him. His name is Sprinkles! Okay. What is his voice gonna be? Oh no. I don't know what I'm gonna do for his voice. Um, I'm gonna forget all the voices anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who? Oh, that's me. <laughs> Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of youth and CEO of UCSAL. Oh my gosh! Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. Okay. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm guessing that Colonel Sanders is about to walk in. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is the moment we've been waiting for. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then and then he walks in. <laughs> Why am I playing this? Oh, what? I like the way the music just completely stopped. Okay. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's if it isn't my favorite student, Harland. I have forgotten that freaking dog's voice already again. Can okay. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog. Before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. <laughs> I don't know if I want- No, 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 no. I gotta- I gotta see if I can do- Okay. <laughs> Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. I don't know if I'm going to keep that one. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. <laughs> Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you. And you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Oh my god, I've just turned her into like my princess almost. Yeah. Okay, whatever it'll do. Maybe we should open that window back up there, back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? You turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. <gasps> Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. <laughs> Please, use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Take the handkerchief? Refuse the handkerchief. Oh, I'm taking it. I mean, might as well. <laughs> I'm 
no. What if I refuse? Uh, I don't think it's going to matter that much. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. You stretch out your hand. And Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. Ooh, it's silk. Mm. Okay. It's so beautiful. You hesitate to press it to your face. But when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has this... It has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Mmm. Chicken. Yum. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to university. <laughs> now he's British? What did I even have his... Okay, he's just going to have a different accent every time, I guess, because I cannot, I cannot think of one for him. Maybe he should be a British, maybe he should be a British dog. Yeah, yeah. He looks like a corgi. I mean, corgi, you know, Queen Elizabeth, it, it, it fits. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest... <laughs> Margarita's getting to me now. The greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of this isn't even British, this is just like upper class, whatever. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. Hmm, okay. Sounds good. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. There's another one? Oh my god, I'm going to have to think of another freaking uh, voice. Who's this? Maybe I should make him sound like nerdy. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students. That tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student's sprinkles of... Springles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Why is he sniffing me? This is weird. Hmm. Your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. Or a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. Oh, I should probably take my vitamins today, actually. When a game <laughs> helps you remember to take your vitamins, that's... Yep, that means you're getting old. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? Oh my gosh. A beef treat? A rubber ball? Or a chicken snack? Oh, he's probably going to like chicken. I mean, he's on a chicken pedestal. I'm going to go with the chicken snack. You reach beneath your <laughs> you reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. Of course it is. He's on a chicken pedestal. Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hands slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. But pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times, as I always do. <laughs> Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds opened to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Baker Bell, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. Oh, dang. 
two good options, but which will you choose? Do you sit by your best friend or do you sit by the guy that you're crushing on? Oh no, oh no. But if you sit by your best friend, okay, if, okay. Let's think about this realistically. If I sit by Colonel Sanders, I'm gonna be sitting there, I'm gonna be sweating. I don't think I ever put deodorant on, so I'm probably gonna smell bad. If I sit by my best friend, we're gonna be able to gossip about him. Hmm. But I'm not gonna be sitting by him. But he's also not gonna smell me. <laughs> this is a tough decision already, and um, I don't know if it's gonna affect anything. But if it does, we can start over. That's fine. We're gonna sit by Miriam. I should probably sit by Colonel Sanders. We're gonna sit by Miriam, though. Colonel Sanders. <sighs> Boy. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> okay, you moved to take your seat by Miriam. This, this was probably my first mistake. I'm so glad to have you near me to support me through this class. Oh yeah, she's very dramatic. I forgot about that. Okay. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders, he has such a magnetic personality and there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. Damn it. <sighs> I'd never sacrifice, oh, that's me. I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. So you say, but now that Muriel mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. Mmm. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast. It's time for a pop quiz. Don't know where that came from. Yay. What was his voice? A pop quiz. <laughs> what was his voice? Yay, a pop quiz about me. I don't know. We're going to go. We're going to go with that one. This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you're ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. If train A is traveling. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Okay, I can get this. Meh, depends extremely looking at you pop or it doesn't matter at all uh extremely looking at you pop that's right oh that wasn't him talk talking that was just me okay forest is to tree forest is to tree as chicken is to blank feather night vision goggles or a slam dunk wait what feather <laughs> i'm like um what <laughs> that's right okay what is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A spork. That's right. I just figured. I mean, it's KFC. They want you to eat your mashed potatoes with a spork. Even though it's not the best. I'm sorry. I would rather have a spoon. Because then you're using that spork and you're, the tines of your spork are just getting all in that styrofoam. And it's just, it's not good. It's not good. Just give me a freaking spoon. That's what I want. That's what I want. I don't know. Whatever. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it is prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat or a pancake that looks like a silly face. Ooh. We're gonna go with anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Yay, I got it. Is Sprinkles a good boy? No. <laughs> He's a talking dog that teaches culinary school. He is the best boy. Or yes, he is the best boy, duh. Why would you pick anything else? Look at him. He's a freaking dog professor. Of course he's the best boy. Your total score is perfect score. Five out of five. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Be honest. Did you cheat? No. You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. <laughs> it pays to be smart. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Thank you. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Hot diggity, Baker Bell. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. You're welcome. Okay. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Wow. The cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. That, that's as... It don't look that nice to me, but okay. It makes sense that the school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. It just looks like a cafeteria with with random flowers, flower centerpieces. Fancy restaurant, really? 
as nice as any restaurant with plastic chairs. Okay. Okay. A delicious fragrance. <laughs> fragrance? What? Okay. Mm a delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Is it fried chicken? Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. Bye night. <laughs> Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. She said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone at lunch. Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Why did she sound like that? I don't know. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented. But were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins. Stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. Oh crap, do I have a piece of paper? But that's all I'll say about that. Well, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> okay, Forrest Gump. <clears throat> what, you think we want your stupid... <laughs> Why did he become a freaking redneck? I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <clears throat> what, you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw. Nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just, uh... Drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is a uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. That wasn't a sick burn. That's why nobody's laughing. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Oh no. Does she like Colonel Sanders? <gasps> Girl, no. Mm mm. Mm mm. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. I don't think that was her voice either. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realized that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Mm -mm, girl, no. No, 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 no. That man is mine. Mm. <laughs> oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is enough for everyone. <clears throat> please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't really like Colonel Sand I, mean, I don't really like Colonel I don't really like KFC chicken that much. Um it's it's one of those things though that pretty much every time that I go home for some kind of for some kind of like Mother's Day or Father's Day or anything like that, any kind of like holidays for some reason, we always seem to have KFC. And then I just sit there and I end up eating the mashed potatoes and biscuit. <laughs> I don't really like the chicken that much. Sorry, KFC. 
Texting Colonel Sanders food transports you to another dimension. It does not do that for me, definitely. Now, my grandmother, on the other hand, she really likes it, but... Alone with your taste buds, gripping your drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that tells it that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart, or swim toward the light. We're not going to swim toward the light, because that seems like I might be dying. So... Hmm. I don't know if I want to try to identify every flavor. Because if I do, um, he might kill me. Because it's a secret recipe. Um, but this one, this one calls to me. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that could only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? <laughs> After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach him. Mm. I, that's the only option I have. I have to approach him. Okay. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wonder if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Uh-oh. He's sweating. Oh no. I've made him sweat. What have I- what am I doing? What have I done? No, 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 no. I'm messing up. I'm messing up. I can already tell. Oh, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> How bold to come out and ask. <laughs> what is this pose? What is this pose? It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What secrets am I going to be trading? Hmm. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. Why does he have that look on his face? We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. Two whole days. That's such a long time. That's like forever. He's clearly not going to give it up easily. Okay. But it doesn't hurt to be persistent. Actually, it does hurt to be persistent. If I'm being honest. Um, persistence is not always the best thing. Because uh, sometimes you're persistent and then you turn into a stalker and then people don't want to talk to you. Not that I'm the stalker. No, that's not what I, I mean. I had a stalker. So that was persistence gone wrong. <laughs> if somebody tells you they don't want to talk to you, just don't talk to them. Okay. It's not because they're playing hard to get. No. If they are, they'll come back to you and they'll talk to you. But if not, just leave it. Just go. Okay. <laughs> you know what they say about secrets, Colonel? Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You've got moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. <laughs> okay. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient. But you can't tell. I use... What is this? Crap. Can I go back? I didn't read the rest of it. Okay, whatever. Because I was trying to figure out what that was. Oh, wow. You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. What is it? <laughs> Talk about the secret. Okay, I have no idea what he said, though. So, um, shoot. Oh, well. Whatever. I guess it wasn't important. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Howdy? Are you a cowboy now? Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. Sounds like you have big plans. I dare say, the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Mm, okay. Negging to show your own strength. What? No. Don't neg people. That's... No. No, 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 no. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. No, no, no. He's got his own recipe. We're not going to worry about that. Be modest, but thoughtful. That sounds good. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, sure, it'd be nice to wow him with a big idea, but you don't want to mess with his recipe because he's already got it figured out. Mm-mm. We're going to be modest, but thoughtful. 
Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. <laughs> of course I do. The flavors were complex, but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Baker Bell. Oh, Baker Bell. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should hate... <laughs> We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena. Yes, a cooking arena. Cool. Where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. All right. We're going to have a cooking battle. Okay, cool. I'm excited. I'm not that excited, but, you know, maybe it'll be fun. I swear if... We better not have to make that stupid KFC bowl, because... Anybody who puts gravy and corn in the same thing, you're dead to me. Okay. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh, no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you bounce on Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I'm just going to pounce on him? That seems... Okay, sure, why not? We'll do it. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. <laughs> Me and you, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> Awkward, <laughs> as always. This is basically like me. Want to be my partner? <laughs> sure, Baker Bell. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Ah, Pop in the industrial oven? Whatever he is. I don't know. Hello, new partner. Beep boop. Bzz. Oh, my. Two potential partners? I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. <laughs> okay. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Mm, well, we know that she thinks that Pop is cute, so that would be... That'd probably be the best choice. Uh, we don't really know much about this guy. I don't even know his name, honestly. Clank. Okay, that's his name. We're gonna go with Pop, I think. Because Clank, like I said, we don't really know him. Who's Clank going to get paired up with? Oh, the other student. The student that we don't know his name is. Yeah, yeah. He's probably going to be stuck with him. Sorry, Clank, but I think Miriam would be partnering, partnering with Pop today. Oh, no. It's a, oh, no. He's crying. Oh, Now I feel bad. He'll get over it. Pop gives a big smile as he steps up to the same station as Miriam. I'm a chef. <laughs> I'm a chef. Where? Wh why do I want to make everybody southern? Is it because I'm southern? Probably. He, he holds up a banana and, without peeling it, proudly eats the entire thing. Well, I guess that's one way to do it, but it's not the not the way I would go about it. It's disconcerting, but Miriam is too kind to act grossed out. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I love your enthusiasm, Pop. <laughs> she looks at you like, really, this kid? But it's too late to change your choice now. Hey, you you said he was cute, Miriam. Don't you do that to me. Don't you don't you give me that look, girl. Mm -mm. You said he was cute. I'm trying to be like a matchmaker here. Plus, I'm trying to matchmake myself with Colonel Sanders and keep Ashley out of the way because, no, no, no. She needed to go. Okay. I was just trying to be nice. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. Okay, we can do that. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using an octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind or your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> okay, oh, FC. Okay, oh, FC. I know what you're doing here. You want me to make the mashed potatoes and gravy. 
So I'm probably going to make the mashed potatoes and gravy. Okay, we're going to go with that. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I chose that option, so he would like me. Why am I getting all flushed or embarrassed? <sighs> okay, whatever. It's fine. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Okay. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business, Ashley. Sanders' heart is... is. <laughs> Sanders' heart is my business, and you'd better keep your fingers off my man. He's not your man. Step off. Does someone call for me? Ugh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm all, while I'm over here crushing Baker Bell's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He already peeled them? Or were they just pre-peeled? I don't know, whatever. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. These are not my friends. Oh, how did they, Ashley, Van Van? Are you working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Oh, are we? I just said, are you? Mm, okay, I'm stupid. Aww. Actually, no, it looked like Baker Bell was struggling, so he offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say... I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha! <laughs> Doubt it. <gasps> Why does he have a star in his hair? I don't understand this. Okay, whatever. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But, Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense. But one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel. And if you... <laughs> she's coming... <laughs> oh, my gosh. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, <laughs> in your time of need, or turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. Oh no, but I gave her the partner that she doesn't like. Oh crap, Miriam, are you going to ruin this for me? Maybe I should just turn to Colonel Sanders. Mm, I don't know. Is that going to make me look, like, too needy? Miriam, babe, back me up. You turn to Miriam, and as soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need radar is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them! I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust vis-a-vis -vis my skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from the competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but Baker Bell is my partner for today's activity. You look for Sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis and their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mesh texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural pe It's as... Mm, it's as if... I'm sorry about that. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention attention was elsewhere. I'm being very nasally today. I think I'm starting to get a cold. <clears throat> I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. <laughs> this is not making me hungry, but sure, whatever. The mashed potatoes and gravy are pretty good. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork. And for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. 
Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. Didn't time stand still earlier? I mean, you're repeating yourself game? Okay, cool. If you love something, set it free. What? <laughs> what is this? What's this supposed to be talking about? Okay. Together you dig the utensil. Wait. Was he talking about the spork? I'm just... <laughs> Together you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. Ugh, Ashley! My god, girl, how thick are your thighs? Sorry. <laughs> and then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling <laughs> the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, I'm gonna get in trouble. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. The corgi's mad at me. Oh no. Hold on right there, Baker Bell. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'd both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potatoes, face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic! In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. I don't know where that accent came from. Plated on a battle axe forged. <laughs> Plated on a battle axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on. And you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh. I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! <laughs> what? What is this? What is this? Um, okay. Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment. Then... It then is almost immediately back to his op <laughs> oblivious self. I can't read today. I'm real bad at reading today. Okay. Oopsie. <laughs> Tastes like poison. <laughs> the entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on! <laughs> you follow Colonel Sanders out of the room.